Let's welcome in our guest today. John Wertheim is an award-winning journalist, works for the Tennis Channel, 60 Minutes correspondent, Sports Illustrated, and a dear friend. John, thanks so much for doing this today. How are you? Oh, good. I'm better than uh, Marcus Smart. Good. Uh, <laughs> you're Man, you got me thinking about your list already, but good. How are you guys doing? Well, that's the point, John. I'm glad it got you thinking. So, you know, we don't want to reveal anything too big, but we have three men singles players, as you heard on the list, Nadal, uh, Federer, and Djokovic. There may be another tennis player on the list, mm -hmm. wink, wink. Uh, mm. You can pr probably figure that out. But for the men's side, did we get this right, putting Joker, Federer, Nadal, Joker highest, Federer next, and then Nadal. Did Perloff and I get that right? Oh, man. Um, I... <laughs> um, Lay it on I us. You can be no, brutally I, honest. I mean, it's, I mean, first of all, the whole, just back, back up. The whole thing is crazy. Like, Pete Sampras won 14 majors in, you know, in when he retired in 2002. And this, you thought this was going to be like Hank Aaron's home. This was DiMaggio's <laughs> hitting streak, right? This would not get broken in our lifetime. He's not even on the medal stand anymore. So the fact that you've had three guys in the last 20 years do this is just extraordinary. I, I just think majors in tennis anyway have become the gold. Like, that's where it's at. That's it. And Nadal has more than Federer, and he has a superior head-to-head -head record against Federer. I kind of – I mean, it's crazy because if you'd done this 10 years ago, Federer would be, like, in your top five. We wouldn't even be talking about him because he wouldn't have revealed him yet. But right now, I, I think you kind of have to put Nadal ahead of Federer, no? The Ooh. reason why, that's funny, the reason why we put Nadal the lowest is because it was dominance on one surface, you know? And so we thought, is that a little lopsided because it was just so dominant on clay? But now you've given us something to think about, that his head-to-head -head against Federer was much better. He was better than Federer. I know. Yeah. And I think, I, you know, you look at who... He had to beat Federer, too. I mean, that's why I think Djokovic is so remarkable. That he had to beat – I mean, look at who Federer beat in the beginning for his first, you know, in 2003 to, say, 2008. And it was a bunch of, you know, Mark Philippoussis and an older Agassi and Andy Roddick a bunch of times and guys you've never heard of. <laughs> um, and then these other two guys come along. So not only do they end up with more majors than Federer, but they had to go through him. So, yeah, I, don't, I mean, Nadal's won 22 majors and 14 have come on clay, which is crazy. But he still, you know, he still won eight of them off of clay. Right. And I just, I don't know. I mean, he, he has more majors and he had a better record head-to-head -head against the guy. I kind of think he's got to be higher, no? John, you had an interesting point in your mailbag, uh, your SI mailbag on tennis, where Djokovic has a home field advantage in the sense that he had a target to go for because he's the last one of the three. Mm. So he he's clearly been targeting the Nadal and Federer's major record. Honestly, I give Federer a little credit because he was first. Does that make any sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I, I think I thought it was like, it's like batting in the bottom of the ninth, right? You yeah. know exactly what you have to do. The other team... Better is just of hey, put as many runs on the board as possible, <laughs> and uh, the other team can. Re I mean, you know, the home team can really kind of you know make their strategy and tactics <laughs> specific to what they have to do to win. So, you know, with Federer, it's kind of like hey, go go run as fast as you can. And you're like, well, I don't know, is it a sprint? Is it a marathon? I don't know, just go run. And with the other two guys, they knew exactly what the standard was that they had to eclipse. They could sort of fashion their game to beat Federer. Well, what what do I have to do to beat this guy specifically? He didn't have that advantage as the guy who went first. John Wertheim is our guest. He's award-winning journalist and author, uh, tennis channel, 60 Minutes correspondent, Sports Illustrated, is the smartest guy we know. We had to bring him on mm -hmm. because before we knew it, we're making a top 25 athletes since 2000 list, and four tennis players <laughs> made it on the list. We're like, is this right? But I think it is. At their peak, John, between Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer, at their peak, who do you think was the best? Oh, I, I mean, what, what is, let me throw this, first of all, like, what, what surface are we playing on? If, <laughs> right. if it's playing Nadal, I think anything else is probably Djokovic. I mean, okay. the other thing, what do you guys do to account for money and technology? Mm. And what, you know, Le LeBron, God bless him, and Neil Brady, too. But these guys can invest tens of millions of dollars in prolonging their career, um, you know, I mean, you've seen, you know, whatever. Uh, Porzingis will make twice as much money as Michael Jordan will. I mean, the the financial advantages that then can get sort of 
you know, you can then convert that into career extension. Doesn't that really help athletes like Djokovic who have come along later than the others? That's a great, um, great point. Anyway. Yeah, no, I we've we've accounted for that. Hey, John, I love uh, talking to you too. You've written a lot about MMA. If you had to put one MMA person, either a man or a woman, on there, who would you choose? Oh man, top twenty-five of since two thousand. Um, I can tell you who we thought about. We we had robust conversations Uh-oh. about Anderson Silva, about John Jones, Conor McGregor. Um, Ronda Rousey and Ronda Rousey and Amanda Nunes. We we had robust debates and ultimately none of them made the list. Uh oh, Uh-oh, John. <laughs> it sounded Some... like he dropped his phone down a sewer or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so reveal there. None yeah. of our MMA. He didn't want any of that MMA smoke. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Dana's not <laughs> listening. Um, We'll get John back up there. So right now, a little bit in the Ooh. chat, youtube.com slash CBS Sports Radio. Dan in Vegas, Curry over Kobe is a disgrace. We knew Kobe is polarizing no matter where you put him. Yeah, I mean, Curry, that's a really good, it's a tough one. I think Curry's transforming the game gives him a, a little bit of an edge where Kobe just copied Michael Jordan. <laughs> And I love Kobe too, but you a know, little bit Curry more was very different. About the transcendence uh, of the game, which is, you know, usually I, this is why I always put LeBron over Curry. I know that Curry yeah. transcended the game, but obviously I think LeBron is the better, the better player. I mean, Curry's yeah. the greatest shooter of all time. So that's a great point, by the way, that John had, wherever John is. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, I know. It's uh, not all right. That the fact that Djokovic, Brady, LeBron, they can extend their careers because of fitness kind of shapes this list. Because oh. I think we're giving Brady credit because he was awesome until he was 45 years old. Definitely. LeBron puts a million dollars a year into yeah. his body only. All right. John is back. John Wertheim, 60 Minutes yeah. correspondent, Tennis Channel award-winning journalist and author and Sports Illustrated as well. All right, John, we picked up at UFC MMA fighters. We None of them ended up making the list. Is that a mistake? It's hard. I mean, it's kind of the, the, the beauty slash curse of MMA. It's not like Floyd Mayweather. It's not like guys go 20 years on. I mean, I guess you could put John Jones on from your hometown, Maggie. Yep. You could put Khabib on, but I, I don't. I mean, it's kind of the nature of the sport, right? That you're on top of the world and then you get beat. And it's one thing that I think really appeals to fans. No, mm. no one's no one's larding their record for five years while waiting for their promoter to like set up the Pacquiao Bayweather fight. Like you, you fight the next person, but what it means is that you don't really. I mean, Khabib would be the only name I could think of, but you know, I mean, Conor McGregor is great for a few years and then he gets beaten a few fights and no, no one's leaving that sport undefeated. So I think, I, I don't think you're missing anyone. Khabib maybe, but that's about it. Uh, John, I know you've written about the 84 Olympics and Carl Lewis. Uh, the, the athlete that reminds me most of him is Usain Bolt. We have him at number six on the list. Are you okay with putting Bolt up that high? Um, I think it, yeah, I, I, it's sort of like heavyweight. Like there's still something that goes with being the fastest man in the world. Um, I think that's about right. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't, don't you guys, first of all, individual versus team sports yeah. is sort of a dip, but also a, a full season versus, um, you know, you show, I mean, I think it's hard to make him much higher just because of the, the wear and tear and competition. On the other hand, being the fastest man on the planet for basically a decade, probably buys you some some currency there. John, last one for me, and this is purely hypothetical because we have not released the top five greatest athletes since 2000. The top five is tomorrow. But let's just say, for argument's sake, maybe Serena Williams ends up on this list somewhere. How, you know, for Serena's dominance, can you just shed a little light on the type of competition that she had, right? Like the Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer, they had each other. You know, they were all battling each other. Serena, besides maybe, I guess, Venus, people used to say Sharapova, but that really wasn't a rivalry. She really didn't have, I don't think, a head-head rival. You know, the era that Serena was playing in, can you just talk to that a bit? Yeah, it's it's sort of the great, um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? She was so dominant, and everyone's like, well, she didn't have to beat anyone. She didn't have a rival. And you're like, yeah, she didn't have a rival because she kicked everyone else's ass. Uh, 
I always, I mean, <laughs> the, the second best woman's tennis player of the last 25 years, like, shared a bunk bed with her at one point. So you could do, like, the two headed <laughs> Williams. But no, I mean, Serena won her first major, you know, in whatever, in, in the night, you know, 1999, when, when Bill Clinton was pre- president. And she won her last major when Trump was president. I mean, it's just, it's crazy what she did. And, um, I mean, I think she's the best. I don't think I've seen a better athlete. I don't think I've seen a better competitor. And I think the fact that she didn't have a rival is attributable mostly to the fact that she didn't let anyone, you know, Maria Sharapova beat her once. And then Serena's basically like, I'm never losing to that blondie again. (laughs) And, um, And she didn't. I mean, it's just, I think she didn't have a rival because she didn't give anyone a sniff. And I think that's, that's a point in her favor, not in to her detriment. John, we got a break, but real quick, are you as obsessed with the submarine story as Maggie and oh, I are? Uh, I don't know if, if you would do that story for 60 minutes, but how crazy has this week been? It's been crazy. Have you have you seen these clips about the you know the the video game console and the, yeah. the sort of uh, sa- saving up on? I mean, it's yeah. There's, there's there's surely I'm not the first por- person to point out the irony that the Titanic was like rich people going out on this uncertain craft because uh, they bought all the fancy stuff and now they wanted the seafaring experience on this new fancy toy. And now a hundred years later, it's basically history. Surely someone else has made that point. Yeah. Yeah. How many lives is the Titanic going to claim is what I've seen a lot of. I'm expecting (laughs) to see John in like a boat off of Nova Scotia in the next (laughs) couple weeks reporting for 60 minutes. John, thank you so much. We know you're busy. Can't tell you how much we appreciate you lending your expertise to our list. Oh, fun game. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank John. You, John. That's John Wertheim, award-winning journalist and author, Tennis Channel, 60 Minutes, of course, Sports Illustrated. He does it all.